Hi, it's Lee. I originally shared some of our family miracle stories in the spring of 2020 because I wanted to be a voice of um, speaking out against fear. I wanted you to know our God is good and trustworthy and loving and faithful and a good father who cares for his children. I'm going to share some more stories now and talk about a couple things specifically, the methods of man and having an abiding relationship with Christ. So the story for this video we call Toilet Salvation. This is a story from January 2022. So we have three bathrooms in our house, the main floor bathroom and the main hall bathroom upstairs with the bedrooms and an ensuite bathroom in what used to be my parents' room and we now call it the men's room. It's where the teen boys' bedroom is. So the story starts with a clogged toilet on the main floor. My husband tried plunging and had used drain cleaner, um, but it hadn't worked. And I asked my husband if he had used the drain cleaner, because I had known we hadn't had the full amount, and you're supposed to use the full amount. He assured me he had, and I assured him he hadn't followed the directions. He complained it did nothing, and I complained that he couldn't expect it to work if he didn't follow the directions. Now, arguing and complaining is not what you should do when you have a problem. We were already off <laughs> on the wrong foot. Now I buy double of the drain cleaner and he uses it and it works and I feel the victory. It's not long before the toilet is clogged upstairs in the main hall bathroom. Plunging doesn't work and I feel prepared. I had gotten double of the drain cleaner. It does nothing. So we put a sign up, do not use and <laughs> use the men's room or go downstairs. A week passes. And the toilet drains over time, but then whenever we test it, it just fills up again. So we occasionally toss out a, you know, Lord, we need help with the toilet prayer. Um, but that's it. And, you know, why didn't we call a plumber? Uh, because I was waiting on the Lord to fix it. And here's another problem. I hadn't talked with Jesus about it. I had developed a habit of just ignoring problems and waiting on the Lord to deliver us. It was a method, a way of doing things to try and get what I wanted. Uh, what's wrong with this method? Besides being any method, which is never the right thing to do, it's like testing the Lord. That's not what my heart meant. It makes me sick to think of it. Behind it was some faith in the God I know, who's my savior and deliverer, my rescuer, my provider. He takes care of me and he meets my needs. And we've never been abandoned and he does take care of us. Even in this story, we always had at least one working toilet. But we don't get to dictate to God how and when he delivers us or try to make him act. We don't throw out prayers or declarations like we're talking to the air. We live in a relationship with Jesus, with our good father. We weren't really in faith. It was sort of a wait and see if he does anything, and if not, we'll figure something else out. And that's not faith. If I were really in faith and I knew he wanted me to wait on him, then I would, should hopefully, be willing to wait indefinitely. We had no word to rest on that he would fix it without intervention. We would have eventually caught the plumber. Okay, back to the story. So then the men's room to toilet clogs, and it gets worse because they flush it and it overflows. And water goes through the floor, and the ceiling under the bathroom is squishy. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's filled, filled up with water. So no more waiting. Something had to happen. Now, I had gotten off track from the start by leaning on my own understanding with the drain cleaner. And what should I have done? acknowledge him. And I know these things. <laughs> I do these things. And why don't I always act in the knowledge that his grace has given me? So I finally do what I should have done in the first place. And I sit down with Jesus. And I'm learning so much all the time about resting in that secret place and always being conscious of his presence. This was just more lesson to help me along. But we'll talk more about abiding with the next miracle story. So I finally talk to Jesus like we're together and communicating. And I stop and listen. And I get my game plan, and one of the things was to tell my husband that it was okay if he wanted to call the plumber. And he replied, okay, I can give him a call. I thought I would test the toilets one more time first, but I can just call. Now I got to play the role that I should have been in before. I got to encourage him in his faith. I said, that's a great idea to test it. Wouldn't hurt anything to try the one that wasn't overflowing. So he did, and you guessed it, it worked. And he tested the overflowing one, and it worked. Never did call plumber. It's been a couple weeks, no more trouble. So what did we learn? We acknowledge him in all our ways. That doesn't mean we do things and ask him to bless them. We acknowledge him, as in realize he's with us. When we're choosing ways, we follow him, not our own understanding. We talk to him in relationship, not in need or manipulation. We don't follow methods. Just because God used something to bring about deliverance for you or someone else doesn't mean he'll ever do it again the same way. He's creative, copying someone else's steps 
to healing, to blessing, to deliverance, to breakthrough. You get the idea. It's method, not relationship. It's relying on your own understanding, and it's the opposite of acknowledging him. People praise him because it's a method of getting the victory. How wrong is that? Praising him to get what you want instead of because of who he is? I hope you can see how messed up methods can be, but how easy it is to fall into the trap of following man instead of God. Um, I have more lessons on methods and on relying on God instead of playing God in my Good Morning Lord lessons that you can find on allinehomeschool.com. I'll sign off now and we'll talk more with the next miracle story.